Welcome to the Roll Cricket News Roundup, where I'm here to tell you everything that happened in the last week when it comes to card games, board games, RPGs, basically anything you play on the tabletop. Now, this week's going to be a bit heavier on card games, but we still have plenty of other news when it comes to the other elements of tabletop gaming. So, let's get right to it for the week of March 25th, 2024. So I recently did a review for the new Star Wars Unlimited trading card game. You can go check out that video if you haven't already. But as I do with many other trading card game reviews, in the beginning I mention a little blur basically saying one, the game could change depending on what is released, and two, how in the beginning it may be hard to find these products and to not pay scalper prices. And I add that in without even looking how hard it was currently to find Star Wars, more of just expectations. But it seems my thoughts were not unfounded. It seems now Star Wars is basically sold out in most stores. With Fancy Flight already announcing that they had a plan in place to make more reprints, they just didn't expect to have to put that plan into play so early. Now, the plan is to release waves of reprints up until the second set that is coming out around July, Shadows of the Galaxy. And it seems that they've told distributors to try and make it so this ends up more in game stores, especially where tournaments are happening basically to try and make sure the cards end up in the hands of people playing the game rather than those who maybe are just buying it in bulk, hoarding it and hoping to resell it on the secondary market. Speaking of which, apparently right now it is very high and still going up even with the announcements of these reprints. But that probably is the case, I feel, with a lot of these things. It won't be until it really saturates the market. Probably, I'm just going to be, say, the third set when we really see the first card start dropping in price. Now, obviously, the fact they're selling out is good news. Supposedly, this is already outsold completely. Their other big popular games, mainly Arkham Horror and the Marvel Champions LCGs. But as of now, we'll have to see whether it will be enough to satiate the current demand for this card game. Now, we don't know when the first reprint wave will be arriving, though some people have reported that their stores were saying to come back around April if they want to just straight up buy any product. So... Odds are, if you are looking and you weren't able to get your hands on any of the Star Wars card game stuff yet, maybe visit your stores around mid-April or so to see if they got a restock. If not, maybe they'll have a contact list, something for you to get notified when they have more product. Now, we have another shareholders meeting to talk about, but this time it's not from one of the big companies that I'm usually bringing up, but rather a smaller but still pretty well-known one when it comes to the board game sphere. Stonemeyer recently had their shareholders meeting, and on the surface, it doesn't sound that great. Over the last few years, it seems to have been dropping in revenue with a peak around 24 million, then 20 million, and then in 2023, they had a revenue of around 16.7. Now, Jamie Stegmeyer said this isn't bad news at all, as he believes the company to be in a healthy position should be bouncing between revenues around 15 to 20 million, stating that they're still within those bounds, and the 24 that happened a few years back was probably an abnormality due to the pandemic and that the actual drop for 2023 was probably because in the year before people stocked up a bit more on their evergreen titles so they weren't buying as much in 2023 and that there wasn't a new wingspan expansion released in 2023. Now he did talk about there were two releases during that year expeditions as well as apiary and how he sees that the apiary is going to grow but he's not sure about how expeditions sold so Maybe expect more for the your space bees, but maybe a pause for now on expeditions, or at the very least, if we continue in the scythe earth, it won't be through expedition expansions. Interesting enough, though, their profits, though, overall still went up, mostly because while revenue went down, a lot of their costs also went down. In particular, it seems shipping was a big one with making deals with other companies, as well as just shipping containers being cheaper, allowed them to get more money when they actually sold the game. That all said, even though the shipping containers went down in price, they are starting to go back up again this year, mostly because of the story I mentioned a little while back with the issues when it comes to shipping around the world. However, this year is still looking pretty good for Stonemaier Games, as their first release of the year, Wormspan, which is the Dragon spinoff, but still in the Wingspan family, sold very well, so much well, apparently just as many copies as both Expeditions and Apiary from the previous year combined. So, as of right now, while the initial title says revenue dropped. Overall, it does seem to be looking pretty good when it comes to Stonemaier games, and the year has only just started. Now, usually when a board company designs a new game, they don't make it themselves. Usually they outsource it to a factory outside of their control. 
Now, CGE apparently has been using the same factory over its entire inception and has now decided maybe since we've been using this factory so much, it's time that we had a bit more of a stake in it. They announced they're now officially co-owners of that factory with the original owner Ludofact, which makes sense considering that apparently 70% of what that factory makes is CGE orders. So why not, if you're already using most of the factory, have a bit more say there? CGE stated that this will be a great move, not just because, well, if you're already using that much of the factory, you might as well own a significant amount of it, but it will now allow them to maybe streamline some games as well as experiment more with the production process. This was already seen with their Rewood, which used recycled wood for their City of Silver game that released last year, but I imagine they could try out maybe some more unique molds, unique material styles, and since they own more of it, they can basically bypass maybe some of the extra costs that usually would scare another company from trying it out. I'm really curious to see how this all ends up. One, because I'm curious just what they choose to experiment with and how this does generally just affects their games. But if it also starts showing other board game companies that by owning a significant part of a factory where they make a game, that they will be able to maybe have a better product or just a cheaper product, something that will see be copied in the rest of the industry. Of course, only time will tell, but I'm really curious to see how this does affect the board game business market. We have another controversy when it comes to the art of Magic the Gathering, though not AI related, still a bit of stolen art. This time, it seems to involve the card Trouble in Pairs. If you notice, the art has two characters on it, and someone noticed that the art of the second character with the mohawk is disturbingly similar to an art on the cover and actually a cyberpunk book. The art in question seems to be from the cover of the cyberpunk 2020 novel, The Ravagers. And if I put them side by side, you can see why this doesn't seem to be just a coincidence. Wizards have stated that they're going to look into this. Overall, it's just another sad thing to hear when another piece of art, like you expect to hear that just AI is being used, but it's not just that, it's the artist stealing in a way from another artist, which technically the AI art program is too, but this is particularly targeting one person. I'll keep an update if there is any announcements of whether this turns out to just be amazingly close, which I highly doubt it or if Wizards decides to respond in any way, such as announcing that they're going to print a new version with different art. For now though, it does seem that the best detective work when it comes to figuring out if there is a problem with your Magic the Gathering art is of course crowdsourcing it to all your Magic the Gathering players. Quick news story for those who are a bit more interested and involved with Gamma, Grace Collins is stepping down from the Gamma board after two and a half years. They have served many different roles, including creative director, vice president, as well as an intern president. So right now, they're going to have new elections to fill the vacant slot. And currently, I think there are three applicants, but we'll see whether this makes any large changes when it comes to Gamma or whether this will be par for the courts. Finally, and sadly, game designer James M. Ward passed away at the age of 72. He designed many games, though probably is going to be most well known as helping design D&D in its early years but also worked on plenty of RPGs, including a one-on-one -on -one series and a lot of trading card games, including a Dragon Ball Z game and a Tomb Raider card game. Of course, losing any game designer is a huge loss. And for those who have played his games, maybe brush off that old RPG book or deck of cards and give a game another go in his honor. Now onto game announcements, though our first stories probably could have just been news stories by themselves. First, we're going to talk about Lorcana. We know the name of the fourth set. It's going to be Ursula's Return. And if you couldn't guess the title, it's themed around Ursula in particular with a new product that will be releasing alongside of it. This title, The Illuminator's Quest Deep Trouble, is actually a cooperative campaign against Ursula. You can play one to two players with just the box or up to four if you count any of your other cards you've collected throughout Lorcana's history. The game will have a way for you to adjust difficulty and uh, supposedly a secret envelope that sounds like it will continue the story. And from what I can tell, this cooperative style sets may be where more of the story of Disney Lorcana may reside rather than in the booster packs themselves. Supposedly any cards in the cooperative set will be playable in the regular game. However, I couldn't find like official confirmation of that. So maybe just keep an eye out until we get closer to the release. Speaking of which, the release of that will coincide with the four set, both coming out May 17th. However, there is one other Disney Lorcana product. It is a called Disney Lorcana Gateway. It's based to be a gateway entry point for newcomers. It comes with two smaller decks, and supposedly it's going to rotate and change each year. 
meaning that they're probably going to update it in case there are any cards that become with keywords that are evergreen. For example, like the locations that become more common. And of course, the, the first one is going to be coming out this August. I wouldn't be surprised if it's at Gen Con. Next, we need to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, though. We're not, I guess one of them is sort of game related, but really they're more D&D products. For its 50th anniversary, I think I mentioned these before, they announced the new Converse line, in particular, obviously the big thing being shoes, but they'll also have other items such as hats, shirts, sweatshirts, etc. There's also a new Dungeons and Dragons Lego set, and this huge set, which comes to the dragon, plenty of other monsters, and of course, adventurers, apparently will also have a one shot, probably by the same name, that you can download, or I think there's a way for you to earn and gain a physical copy through the Lego Insiders program. Also, I will want to note, by the way, though, that that Lego set, while looking really cool, is $350, which, I mean, maybe that's not that expensive for Legos, but still, compared to regular board games, is quite a bit. Though, we still have other things besides those big stories. First, Ziggurat, coming from Matt Leacock and Rab Devio, is coming out. This is a co-op legacy game, also designed to be a bit more of a gateway legacy game for families and maybe those with younger audiences, and that is planned to actually be released at this year's Gen Con. Then we've got Roth. This is announced a little earlier from Chip Theory Games. It's a dice drafting and area control game with a lot of different modes, solo, co-op, competitive. The pre-orders are up now if you want to pick it up, but it's not slated to actually be released until next year. Then we've got a new Vampire the Masquerade rival set, this one titled Martial Law. To my knowledge, this one seems to be heavily involved with actually their hunters, so it's going to be pulling a bit more on the just humans trying to get back at you for being very annoying vampires. That is slated for this June. Then we have Ink and Gold. This game actually released back in 2005, but a new edition of it is being released. It not only will come with new art, but as well as a new special expansion titled The Danger Expansion. This is slated to come out this April. But that is all the news we have for this week. Let me know your thoughts on anything in the comments down below. Do you play any of the trading card games I talked about and do any of these news stories affect how you choose to play it? I'd love to hear anything you have to say in the comments down below. But for now, I'm Will, and I'll see you next time on the News Roundup.